Welcome everybody to my newest Let's Play, Star Tropics for the Wii. This is a port of the game that originally came out for the regular Nintendo in 1990. It's pretty much a straight port. Uh, the only thing changed uh, between the NES version and the Wii version is they changed the name of the Yo-Yo to a star because Yo-Yo was copywritten and they no longer had the copyright to it. Uh, so the Yo-Yo has become your island star. And speaking of islands, there is the first island we're going to start on, Sea Island. In this game, the story is that um, you're a baseball player, a teenage baseball player in high school, and your uncle is an archaeologist. And he uh, is calling you over uh, to come visit him uh, as he explores the tropic islands here in Sea Island. So I just want to get some here real quick. We're going to see the story here, but I'm going to alter the story. Uh, I'll talk about that when we get to the thing. But I wanted to go here because um, in the instruction manual that you got with the game, uh, there was a letter inside of it. And at one point in the game, it tells you you have to uh, dip the letter in water to get a code. So they let you do that here um, in the electronic manual. So we dip the letter in water there. We got 747. So that'll be important in uh, at the end of chapter four. So, in the game, you're supposed to be uh, named Mike, but in our thing, we're going to be called Mr. Tumnus. He's a rat from Marty Mouse House. And this is my way to honor him. He's currently at the bridge, the Rainbow Bridge. But, uh, in this game, he is going to Sea Island, where his uncle, Dr. Jones, has his laboratory. This game was made by Nintendo, and it, you can see a lot of similarities between it and Zelda 2 and Zelda 1. Zelda 2, it's like uh, you're walking on the overworld, and when you step onto like a location, you go into a blown-up map. So, welcome to Coca Cola. Welcome to Sea Island. Mr. Thomas, you're an ace pitcher right here. Show me how to throw a fastball. Have you met our chief yet? He's waiting for you. So you have to just talk with all these people. Um, there's a thing called Star Tropic Syndrome, and uh, basically what that is, it's, it's where like you can't advance the plot until you talk with enough people. I guess that's the game's way of uh, making sure that you uh, get all the plot to the game. So listen, Mr. Thompson, I have some bad news. Last night, try not to be too upset, but your uncle, Dr. Jones, has been abducted. We must keep this from the islanders so they don't panic. You have the best hope of rescuing Dr. Jones. I don't know what to do. Can you help? No. Aw, oh, Mr. Thomas, come on. Yeah, you have to say yes. Good, you're brave. Take this star. You may think this star is just a toy, but it's very powerful. Mr. Thomas, you're an ace pitcher. Use it. And eventually, the uh, island star will become a morning star and then a supernova much later on in the game. At certain points in the game, uh, the weapon will be upgraded. So, can we talk with the chief? Do you want to talk with a bunch of the other people yet? Uh, the, uh, to the upper right corner, there you see the guy. He looks like he has like a blue hat on. Uh, he's blocking the entrance to that hut there. Uh, you have to talk with all the people in order for him to let you into that hut. Like I said, it's just probably the game's way of making sure that you get uh, all the plot. You don't miss any clues, so they force you to uh, talk with everybody. So, so that guy saw shooting stars, shooting stars, or something uh, omens of something bad happening. This lady's gonna roast a pig, and there's a pig right down uh, by her, uh, her hut there. So we've talked to a lot of people. We can talk with this uh, guard here, and he's gonna let us through. Oh, you're Dr. J's nephew. Here's the tunnel. Good luck. Step in the tunnel, and we meet the shaman and sister of the island chief. Your uncle was abducted because he found a secret in the lost rooms. I have great hope that you will succeed in rescuing Dr. Jones. Just like your North Star, island sailors look for the Southern Cross. Mr. Tumnus, many wild monsters await you in the dark below. But remember, the magic of the Southern Cross is always on your side. Now begin the test of island courage. Good luck. So right now we have like the adventuring type uh, part of the game. Uh, it's like Zelda where you walk around in, uh, the first Legend of Zelda where you walk around in uh, four directions. 
but you can jump in this game. You can only jump one tile uh, until there's a later item that you can get that makes you jump two tiles, but it's usually only, it's only uh, lasts for a room. So you go through the rooms here, uh, picking off monsters. Uh, they drop sometimes these things called, they drop stars. And uh, when you get five stars, you will get a heart back. You see our little uh, heart uh, life meter down there? Just like Zelda, you have little heart containers. You get uh, hit by an enemy, you lose um, a portion of your heart or a heart. Uh, if you lose all three of your hearts, uh, you will uh, lose a life and you'll have to restart over uh, at a certain checkpoint in the dungeon. So you always start with uh, three lives. Every time you reset the game, uh, uh, you, you'll restart with those uh, three lives. So if you lose all three lives, you just have to continue. Uh, but we won't be doing any of that. You can get more lives through uh, these like, like kind of like mini chance games and dungeons. Uh, but whenever uh, you reset the game or restart over from a save point, they already go put you back. They always they always put you back to the default uh, three. So you have some puzzles uh, in the game uh, where you uh, have to like step on these uh, foot tiles to make the buttons appear, and the buttons will open doors or uh, like in this room here will make a wall explode. If we would have went to the left or the right there, uh, both of those areas are dead ends. So it forces you back into this room. This way. We got our second item there. Uh, you have the star, which has uh, unlimited use. Uh, but then you have secondary weapons, like the torch there. And the number beneath it has uh, how many uses you can use it for. Uh, you can't keep uh, sub weapons between uh, dungeons, so feel free to use them up. We're saving them for the boss of this, like Zelda. Uh, and dungeons have bosses in them, so uh, you can select your sub weapon by pressing the select button. In addition to sub weapons, you can also get magic we uh, weapons. And that includes medicine. Like the medicine in Zelda, uh, this restores uh, hearts to you. So, you pick up the medicine, see uh, down there below a heart container, now there's the little bottle of medicine there. It uh, now has a one, there's a second medicine here. We just want to make sure that we don't go up anymore, because up there, if you go up, it's a dead end, it goes right into a bunch of water. And uh, Mr. Tumnus, he can't swim. Uh, rats are good swimmers, but Mr. Tumnus never learned, so I've got to make sure that Mr. Tumnus doesn't go in the water at all. I don't know why he's doing on the islands, though, because, you know, not being able to swim, but... So we're just going to head over here, grab that other treasure chest, get uh, some more torches. To access your magic items, you press the start button, you get a pause, and then you press uh, up on the controller, and it brings you to a second menu. Show that off when we use the medicines. Like your sub weapons, your medicines don't carry over between dungeons. So, you want to use them when you're finished with the dungeon. So, here's our first boss it's a snake. Uh, it shoots uh, fireballs at you. Uh, you just jump off to the side, left or right. It's only vulnerable when it opens its mouth. Uh, usually it opens its mouth and shoots two fireballs, but sometimes uh, it'll keep its mouth open for a real long time, then you can hit it a whole bunch of times. So we finished it off there. Now I so see you press pause, press the up button, we pulled our medicine up. Now we can use our medicine. And there's this uh, back end of the sneak there. Uh, one thing you can do with this a trick, if you get hit by one of the fireballs, you can just jump forward and use the invincibility frames from getting hit by the fireballs to skip that boss. But, you know, I just wanted to finish him off there, so... After each dungeon, you, uh... Save your game automatically. And we're back in the overworld. This game has a chapter system. There are eight chapters. I'll probably be doing usually like one chapter per thing. Some of the ch other chapters are really big, though, so... Hi, I'm Babu. Dr. J's assistant. Mr. Tumnus, you know Dr. J has a submarine called Subsea. The ID code to start the engine of the Subsea is 1492. That's when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Yeah, uh, usually uh, the codes that the game gives you to do different things have some uh, historical reference to them, so. So let's uh, head to the lab there. 
and we'll pick up our submarine, the subsea. The cockpit of subsea. Welcome on board. I'm the navigation computer of subsea. Call me Navcon. Input the ID code now. Aye, aye, Captain. Subsea is ready to launch. All ahead, full. And that ends chapter one. Between chapters, the game uh, automatically saves it. So uh, when we start in our next episode, uh, we'll just start uh, at the beginning here in chapter two. Chapter two. After a few hours void, Subsea is still cruising on the ocean. So uh, come back in our next episode where Mr. Tumnus uh, finds out what he's going to be doing in chapter two. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.